untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Alrighty, pack one, pick one. Pretty strong pack overall. Great rare with Augur of Autumn, which is probably going to be my pick. Then we've got Morbid Opportunist, that's probably the best uncommon in the set. Overwhelmed Archivist is also decent. And then Moonrager Slash, one of the best commons in the set as well. So those are kind of the cards we're looking at, but it's mainly between Augur, Opportunist and Slash, with Opportunist and Autumn being definitely a class above Moonrager Slash. And I think I'm going to just take the rare here to see how that plays out. Second pack, I see a Shadow Beast Sighting, which is always a powerful card. Would also go well with Rejuvenator in a deck that can ramp. Rejuvenator does have a little bit more synergy with Augur of Autumn, I suppose, but I think I'm still going with the Sighting here. Other good cards beside these two green ones include the Alderix Outrider. There's the Candle Grove Witch as a fine two drop. And that's about it. I guess Flood of Switch can also be fine, but not the best with what we first picked. So yeah, it's one of the green cards, and we'll go with the Siding, Hope to Wheel, Rejuvenator. Okay. There is a playable green card with Tireless Hauler, but the five mana green cards are so replaceable. There's the 5-5 five five with Coven that gains Trample, for instance. So I don't think we're going to miss out on Hauler too much. But a Scab Wrangler can be amazing in a deck that can make a few creature tokens. So plays well with some of the green cards that make 1-1 one -one humans. Plays well with anything that has decayed zombies, as you can control the board. So I don't mind the Scab Wrangler here. What's the next best card in the pack? That's a pretty weak pack overall. So let's take the Wrangler and maybe set ourselves up for a blue-green deck. And yeah, I think I'll go with the Rejuvenator here. I also like the Baithook Angler a fair bit as a good 2-drop. There is a Duel for Dominance, which, you know, should be okay in a deck with lots of creatures where getting to Coven is not too difficult. But um, I kind of want to lean more heavily into the Ramp angle. And Blue-Green is all about ramping, casting big flashback cards. So the extra mana from Rejuvenator will come in handy. Vivisection is going to be much better in blue-black than blue-green, as we'll have more sacrifice fodder in general. Okay, best card here, Eaten Alive. Second best card, probably the Gavany Trapper. Uh, Gale Drifter, you know, is playable. A lot less exciting than I thought it would be at first. It's still potentially the pick, or I can speculate on an Eaten Alive in case uh, blue gets cut off. Or I guess same argument for the Trapper. Set ourselves up for a green-white Coven deck, which does have a little bit better synergy with the Augur, I guess. Um, I'll take the Eaten Alive. Seems like that card shouldn't be going this late. And... No very exciting green cards here. So it's between like a Blood Thief, which could be fine, but it's going to be much better in a more aggressive archetype. I think I'm just taking a safe Evolving Wilds that's going to make my deck no matter what. Another Rejuvenator I'll take. So Vampires does seem open here, Late Ambusher, Interloper. But as we've seen, if you don't get that high density of two mana interlopers to enable your author vampires. The deck is a little bit lackluster, as we see with four vampires still left in the pack. No one else wants to draft it either, but I'll take a rejuvenator. And sure, I mean, we'll just keep taking all the rejuvenators. So much life gain and mana. So now all we need is a bit of card draw, some expensive curve toppers, which we kind of already have with the siding. And don't know if I want a tapping at the window. Card's a little bit underpowered. 
There is a no way out, a couple blue cards that I'm not thrilled about. So, I don't think this pick is going to make the deck in most scenarios. Maybe the Observer. If we end up with enough flashback and disturb. Alright, we wield the fourth Rejuvenator. So the cool thing about having four Rejuvenators is that we can easily splash powerful bombs and other colors. So we don't have to be blue-green, but that's probably where Rejuvenator is going to be at its best. So we'll keep our options open in pack two. And then hoping for the six mana sorcery that makes the two ant tokens, for instance, would be fine. I want a two mana ramp creature in blue-green. And a bit of interaction would be nice too. Okay, well, interaction doesn't get much better than clear shot in green. So that's probably going to be my pick. Already have my full playset of Jaren, otherwise I would be tempted to rare draft. The troop would also be a nice one to wheel. And, you know, most other decks shouldn't really prioritize this. So there's a chance we wheel the troop which is a nice way to spend our extra mana from Rejuvenator. Defenestrate, also powerful, and a Silversmith in white alongside Outrider. So it's a pretty powerful pack, so I wouldn't be surprised to wield a troop. Cards like Defenestrate are also cards we could easily splash in our deck with Quadruple Rejuvenator, but no reason to take Defenestrate when Clear Shot is just better. And this pack is awesome. Root Coil Creeper is exactly what I'm looking for as a way to play my Rejuvenator on turn 3. But there's a chance we can wheel it, and we can take Sarith instead. 3-4 gives our attackers Death Touch. Untapped Creatures Hexproof. Seems like a fine pickup here, even though we do have a, ro a lot of 4 drops already. So strictly going by my curve, the Creeper would be better but I'm just hoping to wheel it. I think it's still early enough in the pack that there's a chance we wheel Creeper, given that we've gotten so many late Rejuvenators. It's unlikely that anyone else is blue-green, but of course someone could hate draft it if there's nothing else for them in the pack. Okay. Well, Grafted Identity is a bomb. Of course, going to be better in blue-black where we have more creatures to sacrifice, but it's still an awesome card. Of course, Mentor would be perfect for us too, as a way to generate a token to sacrifice to the identity, and cards like the uh, Scab Wrangler also play well with it, but it's going to be identity. And then we would be very excited to wheel Mentor, but that's unlikely to happen, but maybe an Evolving Wilds makes it back. Okay, this is a perfect home for Phantom Carriage. Can play turn 5 off a Rejuvenator. Powerful 4-4 Flyer that searches up an extra spell to put in the graveyard to get some good value. Both the Revenge of the Drowned and Duel for Dominance would also be excellent here as a bit of interaction. But Carriage is probably just too good to pass up with 4 ways to ramp into it. This pack doesn't have much. Maybe a Cavalry at 5. Could also consider Secrets of the Key as a mana sink. But I'll take my first 5 drop, I guess. Okay, don't mind Pestilent Wolf as a good defensive 2 drop. There's also Evolving Wilds number 2, although if we're just going to be 2 colors, I don't need to prioritize it. Okay, Willow Geist does have a little bit of synergy in blue-green, that's where it's going to be at its best. Still don't have a ton of flashback or disturb really, so I think I would rather have the farmer at that point as a fine three mana play. Can uh, maybe flip over some cards we can replay out of the graveyard. The other option would have been the 5-drop as just a big creature, and there's a Creeper 8th pick, perfect. Another Rejuvenator in the pack as well, 
just to confirm that no one else is blue-green, so very likely that we will the other creeper we passed earlier. Nothing here. Alright, I didn't think we wheeled the creeper then. Yeah, someone must have hate drafted it. That's okay. Alright, so still have one pack left to go. And Town Tamer is a pretty strong 3-drop with a good mana sink to spend all our extra mana that we can generate. Uh, the Ominous Roost would technically be decent here, but again, don't have a ton of flashback. So I think it's going to be Hound Tamer. Nothing here that I really want. Could take another Eaton alive, but we're probably going to have to play it for double black. As I don't have many creatures that I want to sacrifice. And at that point it's not really splashable anymore. So I could take a Timberland Guide or a Secrets of the Key, looking at my curve. Yeah, I guess I could use an extra 2 mana creature. But there's a chance it gets cut. And let's see if I want to take anything over Duel for Dominance. Could Rare Draft the Rampage. Yeah, Duel for Dominance would be okay. It's not amazing. I think I'm rare drafting at that point. All right, I think I already have my playset of the blue-black dual land. So we're looking at maybe a Silver Bolt. Yeah, I guess Silver Bolt's fine. Not really a card we can easily splash, Dreadhound, and don't have enough instants and sorceries to splash Seize the Storm, which would otherwise be pretty nice in a deck like this, where we can make a lot of mana and even flash it back. So, yeah, nothing I really want. Alright, another Creeper is excellent though. Blessing could also maybe make the deck. Bird Admirer, Amalgam. Could also be playable, but I'm gonna go with the Creeper. Another Creeper? Well, we certainly got a lot of them. I'm a bit lacking in the late game department, so I'm definitely happy I picked up Carriage. Would have loved another expensive flashback card. Have Hound Tamer as a mana sink. But um, I think it's still Creeper. Yeah, I'll take an Abomination. Maybe I have to play a Bramble Armor as a way to spend my mana in the late game. I might, might play Secrets of the Key. Just have a little bit more card draw. And then I'm just going to be blue-green, not splashing anything, even though I had the means to. Yeah, could also play Devious Cover up technically, but feels more like a tap out deck. All right, so the deck's nice. Um, would have liked a couple more pieces of interaction. Of course, I rare drafted overtaking the extra fight spell. And then I would have liked a few more expensive flashback cards like the uh, Rise of the Ants or whatever it's called. So, cards I'm considering cutting, Locked in the Cemetery, Observer, now that we have Triple Creeper, uh, maybe the Vivis section, even though I could use a card draw. So these are the three potential cuts. Could also play the second cavalry as an extra chunky creature. So I could just cut three of these. Since again, for Vivis section, the only great synergy is Falcon Abomination. And then maybe like a 1-1 Timberland guy that's left over. 
Otherwise, I don't really have anything I want to actively sacrifice, which is also why the grafted identity is not amazing here, but still powerful enough to include, I think. And yeah, this is 40. Got the secrets for a bit of card draw. Tapping at window could also be a consideration since we do have a lot of creatures and this can be a two for one. So I guess tapping is kind of in contention for the same slot as secrets of the key. Um, in terms of carriage, how many flashback cards do I have? Yeah, it's secrets and siding, and then I don't think I have any disturb. So the carriage doesn't have a ton of uh, options in that sense. So there is an argument for playing one tapping at the window, maybe. Um, could like cut one rejuvenator for it. So that's kind of what I'm uh, considering. There's also Bramble Armor as another potential mana sink. And then the mana distribution. Relatively even split. Leaning more towards green, so we can cast Rejuvenator, but I need blue-green for turn 2 Creeper. So 8 and 8 plus Evolving Wilds is probably fine. Or we could go 9-7, which is maybe better, since our deck is functional without blue mana, but definitely isn't gonna work out without green. Our late game is gonna consist of some big flying creatures, potentially, getting lots of card advantage from Augur of Autumn, Ramping into big stuff ahead of schedule. Grafted Identity can steal a game. Wrangler can help us control the board. And then uh, Hound Tamer as a powerful mana sink can get there too. Like ramping with Rejuvenators, it's probably going to lead to some board stalls. So in a board stall, a card like Bramble Armor is not bad to kind of trade up some of our creatures. Yeah, so I'm kind of thinking maybe plus one Bramble, minus one Rejuvenator. The alternative would be maybe plus one Tapping, giving me an extra flashback card for Carriage as well. Keeping the creature count high. But Tapping just feels so bad when you miss, and even with like 18 creatures, it's not impossible to miss with it, so... I think I'm gonna go with this. Alrighty, well, turn to Creeper, turn three, maybe Sarith, looks good. Do we have any special combos with Sarith's ability? Can untap a creature, but if we untap a mana creature, it's not really accomplishing anything. Opponent's white so far. Ooh, Augur of Autumn is going to be a nice mana sink. And Cavalry will give us the uh, Coven required. Yeah, opponent had the 3-1 flash. It seemed like they had something to play at instant speed, so this one makes sense. And then I'm hoping next turn we can maybe play Augur and play a land over the top. And then between Wrangler and Pestilent Wolf. Wouldn't be able to really tap anything down to set up an attack necessarily. But I guess I'll go with uh, Wrangler here. And end of turn I can use a Wrangler to tap down something big. Yeah, giving Augur Hexproof is a nice touch. So I could tap the Sanctifier, take three. Or I could let this attack. Tap the Silversmith to maybe set up my own attacks. Hmm, sure. Could also trade the Wrangler, technically, although 
Wrangler should be pretty good for me, since I'm going to be able to play lots of creatures. So I think I'm okay taking four. Also, a good point is that with a Wrangler, I can tap my creatures to give my creatures Death Touch on defense. Uh, which is also why Serith plays well with mana creatures, since I can block with them, tap them for mana, they gain Death Touch. So, we've got some powerful combos here. Sadly, found one of our few non-creature spells on top. So, wouldn't be able to draw that. But I guess playing Cavalry is fine. And then I could attack with Serith. Opponent's got her own tapper here with Siege Zombie and a patrol. Alright. I think I'm pretty happy with moving to combats. And then end of turn. Tap. Sanctifier probably. Alright, that we can play for free. And Augur of Autumn's just gonna run away with the game here. Okay, so I have clear shot up, which is always going to be a blowout. Uh, probably okay to attack with cavalry. We've got trample plus death touch, so that's another powerful combo. Put on double blocks, so can clear shot killing, let's say the Sanctifier. They can deal one damage on the way out. Only need to assign one damage to the patrol, Russ can trample over. And yeah, our opponent's in trouble. Hopefully they don't have the rare board wipe, Vanquish the Weak, that could uh, save them. Yeah, this was Augur of Autumn plus Sarith just uh, making it very difficult. Okay. Not the most exciting hand, but probably still a keep. If farmer hits land number four, we've got access to Grafted Identity. And Abomination is the best combo we have with our four mana Mind Control. Gotta wait on armor, since this functions like the Zendikar equipment that attaches right away. So yeah, we just need to hit our land drops and we should be fine. Even picked up an actual 2-drop. Against the red green it is tempting to keep the Death Toucher for later since they can have some large creatures. So I think I'm okay taking 2. And then I might play Farmer before Abomination just to have a better blocker here. Although... hmm. With Evolving Wilds, I can guarantee getting back a land with Farmer, unless I guess the Jackal Lantern interferes. And then if they tap out for a 4 drop, or if they cycle the Lantern. I can fetch with Evolving Wilds, play Farmer, and be guaranteed to get back a land. Take it. K. 
Okay, there's a ruffian, so now we can make the play I described. And if I wanted to, I could attack with a Pestilent Wolf first, which I can give Death Touch. The ruffian's not transforming. Yeah, I guess that's fine. I'm okay You're using my turn trading Wolf for Ruffian. Right. Might as well go with an untapped land. And probably don't need triple blue. Although I don't think this matters too much. I guess maybe triple blue is still better since we do have a blue one drop in the deck I could cast alongside Grafted Identity. 4-3 right. haste. Gets in there. So I still haven't seen anything that I really want to steal with Grafted Identity. So I think I'm just going to play Cavalry and hit for two with my Flyer. And hope Cavalry doesn't get removed. Ruffian's not going to transform unless the opponent passes the turn back. Sentry does have Coven enabled. And then next turn I can maybe go Rejuvenator, put a Bramble Armor on my Flyer. As your opponent takes out the Death Toucher. Fair enough. So now stealing the Ruffian's a little more tempting, but I think I can still wait. Maybe let them do the effort of switching it to nighttime. And our opponent's just kind of dying to our flyer here. And then I can still play secrets and flash it back, or uh, and crack the clue, I mean. Ooh, now there's a creature worth stealing. Well, their opponent does still seem dead. Alright, on to the next one. a lot of trappers. They're not going to be incredibly effective once I play Sarath. Uh-oh. Well, that's a problem. So that's going to get to hit me at least once. And then I have to kind of play Sereth if I want to be able to clear shot next turn. Let's see, if I play Rejuvenator next turn I could have how much mana? Three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's not enough for Sereth plus clear shot, otherwise I could clear shot with one of my Death Touch creatures as well. So yeah, I think it's just Sereth and uh, Hope. Although they can tap Sereth with Trapper. Get a big attack in, but then next turn we can kill Adeline at least. Interesting. 
they're choosing not to tap. Does that mean they have a comma trick for the 1-1? One, one? All right, they're doing it now. Okay. I might want to do this in upkeep or after they activate Trapper on Sarith, presumably. Sure. Let's just do this now. And then I still have a creeper to block the 1-1 one, one and crack my clue in of turn. Oof, sludge monster too. Alright. <laughs> the triple rejuvenator hand. Not looking so great anymore, but I guess we can still block the sludge monster with everyone. So don't really want to play cavalry out. I guess the trappers are going to make it more difficult. Oh wow. <laughs> Jesus. Also, fun fact about sludge monster is that as long as you control one of them, it's going to keep all those you know, slime counters active, so even if the first one dies, my Sarath is still going to be sludged, for lack of better words. All right. They can keep sludging. Yeah, it's gonna be an uphill battle, even once the monster is dealt with. There are still two trappers that are gonna be a thorn in our side. Opponent likes our triple rejuvenator. But now they can start trapping. Hit us for eights. Yeah, that's one too many sludge monsters. Feel free to sludge my zombie token. So what am I hoping for at this point? Yeah, not sure. My opponent's internet disconnects, I guess. Abomination got sludged. Take eight. But yeah, I don't see a way out here. Shadow Beast siding is not gonna cut it. Jeez. Mm, fine opening hand. Ooh, haven't seen our carriage in action yet.
turn to creeper turn three siding hopefully don't mind if I do next turn we can double spell and then kind of like farmer to keep hitting my land drops plus another creeper And Creeper will make it nice and easy to flash back or Shadow Beast sighting as well. I guess one concern is the Sweeper, Vanquish the Horde. They might be setting that up, kind of slow rolling it. And they could already cast it if they play a land. Alright. Sacred Fire actually is kind of reassuring that there's no Vanquish the Horde incoming. So, carriage or flashback siding. I guess we'll go with carriage. And the only flashback card left. Alright. Um, sure. Ooh. Turn one Awakener. Do they have the turn two sacrifice fodder? Another Awakener. All right. Could have been worse, I guess. And then Rejuvenator into Carriage, potentially. So, can't really block, otherwise they sacrifice the other one. So it's going to be a while before we can actually block the Awakeners. Suppose I could double block. There's not much that really punishes me for double blocking, because... Like, what are they going to do for one mana? I guess there's a plus two, plus two. And that's about it. Yeah, sure. Alright, they're just sacking it to the other one. That's fine. It is night time, which also means Hound Tamer gets better. So, don't love playing Carriage when the board is not stable and they can keep hitting me with these four powered creatures. I could go Wolf plus Secrets of the Key, switch it back to daytime, and then have a Death Touch creatures to block the demon. And if they don't attack, I can still crack my clue. That's appealing. Um, if I go for Serith, I can do the uh, mana creature trick. But it doesn't seem as efficient. So this seems fine. Alright. Move to attackers. Hmm. First instinct, double block traveler with uh, the 2 3 and the 2 4. Block demon, give death touch. So, what's bad if I go for that line? Like, even removal on the farmer itself isn't the end of the world. I guess they could have like a 
cut purse to finish off one of my creatures second main but then we still trade a bunch and uh, that seems fine So, do we see a cut purse or another burn spell finish off Rejuvenator? Either way is fine by me. Vandal. And get back a creature from the graveyard. Sure. Well, that seemed like a pretty good uh, sequence for us. And now that the board is more stable, we can afford to play Carriage if we want. Uh, is there a better line? No, that seems good. And then, yeah, might as well put the Shadow Beast Siding in there for free. The Light of the Knights, fair enough. Maybe they thought this was an instance, which is why they attacked. Can only hazard a guess here. Six total, so Scab Wrangle or Serith is an option. Also keeping Tamer as kind of our last card and Mana Sync is not a bad idea. And do I want to send for two? Nah, let's just chill. And then I can wrangle her end of turn, assuming they don't do anything funny. So I could put Sarath in harm's way. I mean, Sarath is good, but if they two for one themselves, I'm okay with it. Sure. Probably time for Shadow Beast to come back. And then I can hit for three and still use Wrangler on the Dread Knight. Sure. Decisions, decisions, Abomination great with our Wrangler. So if I play that, I can still play Tamer. Attack with a Beast, Sarith. Even a Farmer if I want to. Possible there was a lethal line of play available to me. Might have been two damage short. Yeah, go for it. Alright, that drains me for two. Still a long way to go. I feel like our opponent got scammed by the vampires. I think we'll have to wait for the next expansion before vampires are good in uh, both limited and constructed. Okay, so this hand has potential, assuming we find some creatures, which Augur can help us with. And Augur doesn't die, which, you know, the Augur can't really control necessarily. I gotta believe. Hmm. 
All right. Autumn and Sarath like to hang out together a lot, apparently. This is my only play. Yeah, time for Sarath. Next turn, play nice 5-5 five five and hope to spike some lands over the top. And there we go. Mm. Opponent could have a counter spell here. I guess I could send Serith. See what happens. What's happening here? Let's not make that happen. Should probably use the uh, Augur in case they have a bound spell too here. And then I guess I'll play armor. Still probably on Serith. Although that does mean I lose Coven. Although I have a Hound Tamer coming up, I don't have to play Cavalry. Sure. Don't know if this matters too much, but I don't imagine I want to be attacking with Augur too much. Suppose it could have attacked thanks to Death Touch, but then we lose Hexproof. Which seems bad. Okay. Amalgam might be worth stealing eventually. Yeah, I guess in this spot having the Bramble Armor on the Augur would have worked out better. Because they could have attacked with it. Opponent does have a Rise of the Ants in the graveyard, that's kind of scary. But next turn I can Hound Tamer and uh, put a counter somewhere. I think I gotta hang on to Augur for card advantage. And at least I'm not missing out on any creatures off the top. Ooh, carriage. Although, if I play Tamer, I wouldn't be able to play carriage afterwards. Um, yeah, so there's no sequence, really, that allows me to play the carriage. So I'll start with Tamer. I should have played land. That's a mistake if they flip the switch here. Uh, it's a devious cover up instead, that would have happened regardless. Now I can still attack with my five fives. And I could move the armor now if I desire. Let's say to the auger. This still doesn't die. Sure. So now I have Coven enabled even if I don't play Carriage. Sure. 
So your opponent can make ants next turn. Carriage can get the Shadow Beast sighting. And safe to assume they don't have flipped the switch if they didn't use it last turn. Abomination is a great combo with Grafted Identity. So I could go for the Grafted Identity right now, sacking the zombie. Yeah, that's probably fine. If they have another Devious cover-up, so be it. At least I'll know how to attack. Alright, they're gonna bounce their own creature. That's fair. So we can get one good attack in here. Still have a carriage to get siding, so we will have air dominance even if they can flash back Rise of the Ants. And this is a healthy attack for 12. Ooh, they can't flash back ants. Yeah, that's not gonna cut it here. Alright, so we got to seven wins in the end. Crack some packs. Sigarda Splendor. I'll have to build a constructed deck around this at some point. Don't think it's very good for limited. Pretty weak pack overall. Ooh, Angel Fire Ignition on the other hand is awesome. Would be my first pick for sure. Can also splash it as we've done in the past. Although going red white with the angel fire is not a bad idea. Uh, Reservoir, I have my reservations. Uh, seems like a pretty slow card draw engine. But uh, yeah, if you've got enough removal, you can maybe make it work. Diagraph Ford's quite excellent as well as far as commons go. Best uncommon in the sets. Probably the uh, black 3-drop that draws cards when creatures die. But uh, Clear Shot's also definitely a candidate for one of the better uncommons. Another Splendor, so not much to say here. Haven't really seen Arcane Infusion in action yet, but I imagine there will be some decks that can leverage it. And then Beloved Beggars, fine, I guess, and then Veteran can also be a role player. Although not a card I want to pick incredibly highly. Danik is awesome. Great for 2 mana, even better for 4 mana if you can disturb it. So definitely worth first picking. The Fenestrate's also decent. Uh, Ghoul Caller's Harvest's not very good. I think this is take Moonrager slash hope to wheel Seize the Storm to maybe build a sweet blue-red deck. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I can quite first pick Seize the Storm when there's a Moonrager slash in the pack. I think that's the type of card you gotta hope to wheel to make the deck functional. Because if someone else is taking Seize the Storm, the blue-red deck's just not gonna come together. Alright, sweet. So... Yeah, thanks everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.